ਵੇ ਕਟਰ ਕੇ ਚਲੋ ਜੀ ਓ ਸੇਫ ਸਾਈਡ ਆ ਲਗਾ ਓਰੀਆਂ ਦਾ ਕੀ ਵਰਕ ਆਨ ਅ ਸੈਟਰਡੇ ਮਾਰਨਿੰਗ ਟੂ ਰਿਸੀਵ ਸਚ ਅ ਲੂਕ ਵਾਰਮ ਰਿਸੈਪਸ਼ਨ ਲੈਟਸ ਡੂ ਥੈਟ ਅਗੇਨ ਗੁੱਡ ਮਾਰਨਿੰਗ ਪਰਫੈਕਟ ਸੋ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਟੂ ਓਆਈਐਸ ਐਸ ਹੀ ਸੈਡ ਮਾਈ ਨੇਮ ਇਜ਼ ਸੀਵਰ ਟ੍ਰੀ ਆਮ ਹੈਡ ਆਫ ਸਕੂਲ ਐਟ ਦਿ ਜੇਵੀਆਰ ਕੈਂਪਸ ਵੇਰ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਥਿਸ ਮਾਰਨਿੰਗ ਐਨੀ ਟਾਈਮ ਆਈ ਆਸਕ ਅ ਹੈਲੋ Plans. Thank you for coming. Uh, it's nice to see such a large crowd. We think that we're doing really great things here, and so we're quite pleased that the word has gotten out. So thank you for taking time out of your morning to come and join us. This to me is the most important question for the morning. Why are we here? Uh, for us, we think that, as I said, we're doing great things here, and we're happy to share that. So. What I hope you'll receive this morning is a fun and engaging and honest picture of what we do with kids uh, and what we do within the school within the confines of the school. We think that we offer uh, an educational experience that's quite a bit different from what's typically on offer in most of the other schools in Mumbai. So, it's in our best interest to be as honest as possible and to share all the things that we're doing with kids uh, that we believe in. And so why are you here? I think you're here to figure out whether this is the best school for your child. And so what you're going to see in the course of this presentation are lots of pictures of happy kids, uh, lots of pictures of amazing facilities and if you take a look around this room, this is pretty much a measure of the kind of facilities that we provide at both campuses. But there's so much more that we do. Uh, and so as you go through, I would ask you to pay close attention to the things that we talk about uh when we talk about what we believe in uh what kind of education that we offer what we do on behalf of our kids because that's the really important stuff and there will be things that you hear that will make you think this is exactly what I want for my kid you'll hear things that maybe provoke some questions uh maybe some mild skepticism and you'll hear things that make you think these people are crazy but that's okay uh these are all of the things that you should be hearing this morning and you should be thinking about these are our guiding statements and uh they provide direction for us the ois vision i think is something that all students and all teachers know by heart freedom to think and power to be and so it gives you an initial indication of the importance we place on um helping kids to realize their independence the ois mission is a bit more wordy it's a bit of a mouthful there are a couple things that we kind of boil it down to One is that we recognize the fact that our kids are individuals and they have individual needs uh, that we try really hard to attend to. You'll hear in a few minutes about all the ways in which we safeguard our children while they're under our care, the high level of care that we provide. We help them to learn to think outside of themselves and to consider to to think beyond themselves and beyond their immediate context in a situation. And there are lots of attributes and qualities and characteristics that you'll hear about this morning that we uh, promote with our kids. Uh these are some of the more important ones. And of course this idea that they have agency and that we find ways to empower them to make decisions and take ownership of their learning. Very important to us. The other piece of information that's located within our guiding statements are our core values and you may have seen these in the prospectus uh, and also on the school website. Knowledge is important it's the first one we're a school that's kind of self explanatory but there's so much more that we do and that we value and um I think it's that last one celebration. Uh we value celebrating an accomplishment be it big or small. I think that's the one that says a lot about who we are and what we think is important. 
We are proudly one school with two different campuses. And I will tell you that where we learn as adults and as children is of secondary importance to the fact that we're all OIS students, we're all OIS teachers, and we're all OIS families. And so these are the things that, that are the same between the campuses. So we have the same guiding statements. We're governed by the same foundation and board of trustees. You're finding out that we have the same process, no matter which uh, campus you're looking at. We employ the same policies and rules, the same logo, we run the same programs, we even serve the same food. But there are a couple of differences. One has to do with history and size. So the OGC campus, as you know, has been running for the last 10 years, uh, and essentially at this point it's full. And you can see that the JBLR campus pops up in 2017. Uh, we're currently at this campus uh, we have grades nursery through grade eight. Next year we'll add grade nine, and right now we're at about 500 students. And if you're curious about how the school will grow from a grades basis, uh, this is what it's going to look like over the next couple of years. So by the 21-22 school year, we'll have all the grades represented at the JBLR campus nursery grade 12. The other difference that I want to talk about briefly is uh, accreditation and program authorization. So in order to run the programs, and in order to earn the stamp of a quality school, uh, you may have noticed these logos somewhere on the website. If you flip over to the back page of the prospectus, you'll notice them there. I think the IB logo is, uh, is the one that most of you probably recognize right away. Uh, so this is the organization that authorizes the programs that we offer on both of the campuses, PYP, MYP, eventually here at DP. And so the OGC campus is a fully authorized three-program IB World School. So let's talk about OGC first. The diploma program was authorized in uh, 2009 and then evaluated in 2014. So authorization, very briefly, is a two to three year process that schools engage in. Once they receive authorization, then IB comes back every five years to look at what you're doing, to look at how the program is going. Um, it's, a, it's an audit, quite simply. So this is for DP up at, at the OGC campus. Uh, PYP authorized in 2011, evaluated in 2016. And then MYP is the most recent entry at OGC, uh, authorized just this last spring. At the JBLR campus, we are now engaged, since we're in our second year, we're now engaged in the process of becoming an authorized school to offer these IB programs. So for PYP, we are now officially a, a PYP candidate school, which means that we've entered into the process and we're hoping by the middle of next academic year we'll be fully authorized for the PYP. MYP, we just started that process this year. So we are in the process, we hope, of becoming an MYP candidate school, and we'll go through that same process uh, at the PYP as we will with PYP. And then the diploma program, uh, the process is slightly different, but we're on track with this one as well. So we are now a DP candidate school on the way to program authorization in the next year and a half or so. Just a quick message about what this means for kids. It really doesn't mean anything. At this campus, uh, the, the kids, kids are engaged in the primary and the secondary classrooms. They're engaged in these programs. The teachers are teaching according to the PYP and MYP curriculum frameworks. The kids are doing PYP and MYP work, and they're being assessed according to PYP and MYP guidelines. So on the classroom level, uh, there's really not much distinction. But I'm telling you this because we can't call ourselves yet an Ivy World School uh, because we're still working towards that authorization. So I just want you to be aware of that. The other two logos that may be a little bit less familiar are the two agencies, external agencies, through which we are accredited. Uh, the first one is CIS, the Council of International Schools. They're based in Europe. And the second one is the New England Association of Schools and Colleges based in the United States. The OGC campus, oops. The OGC campus is fully accredited by both bodies, uh, and we're about to go through the reaccreditation process. We received that accreditation five years ago. 
The JVLR campus is in that pipeline as well. So we're working towards this accreditation. Um, it's a much wider, it, it covers a wider range than the IB program authorization. Uh, they come in and they look at the, the entire school operations as well as the education that we provide to students. A little bit about facilities. And I did mention earlier that don't base your decision just based on facilities. As I scroll through the photos, look at what the kids are doing. Uh, and also look at the environment in which they're learning. This is us down at JVLR. This is a nursery classroom during story time. And you can get a kind of a picture of what goes on in those classrooms, the way kids are seated, what they're doing, where the teachers are, what's up on the walls. This is our early years cafeteria, so this is where JK, uh, nursery JKG and SKG take their snack each day. Uh, STG students take their lunch in this facility. It was the quickest photo I've ever snapped because the minute I walk in and they see me, they go crazy. Like a minor celebrity here. We have a waiting pool for the early years. This is just off the cafeteria. Uh, on this particular day, I think this was a class of JKG students who were doing a water confidence unit. So we work with them to build their confidence in the water. Lots of play spaces in early years, and, and this, this is one of them. Kids, kids doing all different kinds of things, uh, playing in the, in the house, in the, in the ball pit, on the slides. Our version of a Mumbai traffic jam over there on the left, all right, and, uh, and possibly uh, an Uber driver on the right here. Kids playing together, learning from each other, socializing, very important stuff. You'll hear more about that in the next few minutes. An SKG classroom where kids are working together, sketching out shapes. Notice the furniture. Uh, lots of stuff, lots of furniture and furnishings that promote collaboration. So our kids in primary don't sit at their separate desks. They don't face the front of the classroom. They sit from each other. A PE uh, class in primary, again, in one of the open spaces. This is our primary library. Lots of nooks and crannies for kids to come in and do what they want to do. So some read independently, uh, some work together. There's a girl in the background on a device working on something for class. Kid-friendly, student-centered. One of our primary art studios. Again, kids working together on a sketching project. Our regular cafeteria for primary and secondary students. This is during the snack time. On the terrace, you may have noticed from the model in the lobby or seen photos of it, uh, we have two pools. This is the 50-meter pool competition level, and then the 25-meter pool. There's a 25-meter pool up the road at the OGC campus as well. So really fantastic facilities that allow us to do lots of great things with kids. Also on the rooftop, a turf uh, football pitch. We had a competition up there a couple weekends ago with the, the teams from OGC came to visit us. This is how you know that I know how to use the panoramic function on my camera. This is our gym. Very flexible, allows for lots of things, a rock climbing wall in, on the far side there. Our secondary library. We have lots of spaces that allow for specialized instruction, so we can cover all of the, pro, all of the things, all of the subjects within our program. Uh, this is a music classroom in secondary. One of our art studios, all the classrooms are located along the exterior wall, so you get lots of natural light. Again, kids working together. This is uh, one of our drama classrooms. Kids engaged in activity, not sitting in chairs, facing front, listening to the teacher, certainly not in a drama classroom. One of our science labs. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a photo of kids in there because they weren't in there on the day that I snapped that. And then a design class. So our kids in secondary all take design. And in this particular situation, they are working on their devices together, sharing feedback, um, working on a, a project where they design logos for companies. And then finally, uh, we provide, you, you might know, a uh, hot vegetarian lunch each day. And, um, and so this is, this is the environment in which kids take their lunch. Clean, safe. Uh, and the food's are very high quality. Okay, at this point, I'd like to invite Neil back up to the stage. 
Thank you. Thank you. He's good, isn't he? 15 minutes he had, 15 minutes he took. Let's see if I'm as good. Oh, right. Thank you. Okay. We're going to do wonderful things with your kids. But before we do that, let's keep them safe. That's the most important thing on your minds right now, right? You've got kids about this high, they're cute as buttons, and you need, we need to keep them safe. So let's see what we do. In a country where people normally come to the minimum level of safety, don't they? You know, you drive around the streets and what's the rule? The guy driving the motorcycle has to have a helmet. You know, the, the wife and three kids on the, also on the motorcycle, they don't need one. So they don't have one. You just do the minimum, right? We don't because we think safety is, is more important than that. Um, I think there's a regulation that says we need to have a medical person on the, uh, on the campus. Uh, we have three full-time nurses and we have a full-time doctor who spreads, between, spreads the time between the two campuses. Because it's important, because before we can do anything wonderful with your kids, we have to keep them safe. Um, I shudder when I see some of the, the school buses running around. A little tiny school bus with about a dozen teenagers crammed in there and, and you think that cannot possibly be safe. Um, our buses are nice, they're expensive, uh, they're outsourced to a company that we trust and we monitor the, the safety very carefully, um, the seatbelts for every kids, there's GPS tracking and no, you can't get the GPS tracking in your home because if you can get it, bad people can get it. It's for our use, not yours. There's CCTV on there. There's uh, staff on there. I've travelled on the school buses with the kids. And I tell you, when I'm sitting on the school bus, I'm sitting up straight and I'm making sure my seatbelt's done up because I don't want to roll that ditty. So we keep them safe on the buses. Um, our security personnel is also outsourced. But we make sure that we have the same personnel year after year after year. We train them. We have lots of them. This is only a very small section of them. Uh, we've got lots and lots of them. We have them on every floor of every building. Um, they're part of us. They, they take their training from us. They, they dance in our happy video. Uh, they play cricket in our staff cricket team. Uh, the guy on the left has got a, a wicked off spin. Um, they're part of our family. And they look after our kids. Because that's important. We have these things. There's probably a regulation somewhere in the, the Mumbai regulation that says you've got to have... Uh, I think there's a regulation that says we've got to have CCTV cameras covering the entrances and exits. We, we have 400 of these at the OGC campus and another 400 of them here and, and they're very high quality ones. And what that means is if ever there's an allegation of anything that's not right, I can go back and see exactly what happened. And that's useful to us only if we make sure that everybody knows about it. This is not a place where you can get away with anything with kids. Okay? Because keeping them safe is really important. <coughs> okay, they're safe. Let's follow on with um, Steve's question. Uh, what are we doing here? What is our purpose? Uh, this is little Rihanna from last year. Um, what are we going to do for her and with her? What is the purpose of this education? It's only been around a couple of hundred years. What, what purpose does it serve now? Well, it used to be that... School is sort of career training. And, and in this country, I still see some, uh, some residual thinking in that direction. I see, I see the older kids doing, um, uh, doing physics and, uh, and biology because they're going to be doctors. And I see the older kids doing economics and business management because they're going to be businessmen. It's, the world has gone past that. It used to be that if you were good in school, you got to go to university. And then you got a degree, 
and if, if you got, got a degree, degree you, you got, got a good job. job. Whereas if you were able, able to press, press the right, right button, button. <laughs> I, I love, love technology, technology, don't you? It's, uh, oh, oh, look, there, there we are. are. If, if you were bad at school, you didn't, didn't get a good job, job you, you got, got an ordinary, ordinary job, job, and, and you, you probably, probably ended up... <laughs> you probably ended up working for this guy. Because he went to university and he got a degree. That's the way it used to look. Not anymore. 27% 27% of recent graduates of the United States are engaged in a profession that is in any way related to what they studied at university. 27%. University education is not career training. School education is certainly not career training. You've all heard about these kids are going to be applying for jobs that haven't been invented yet? Here's yeah, some of them. Maybe he'll be running a company that manufactures body organs. Clever organizations hire a specialist social media strategist. Companies have CEOs, right? We have COOs. We have CFOs. Now we have CMOs, a chief media strategist, a chief media officer, one of the linchpins of the, of the company. Can you take a look at that little boy's face? Can you see why we love what we do? It's, um, yeah, it's different now. You know, the, um, when I first got here five years ago, I was told that success in India means doctor or engineer. If, if you're a boy. boy. If, if you're a girl, girl it means marrying Dr. Or engineer. <laughs> and that was just five years ago. Look where we are now. You know, some parents still um, like to think of their son as, as, a, as a doctor, maybe a surgeon. Have you seen surgeons lately? No, oh, hang on, I've got a head. I'll come back to that. Kids are going to be applying for jobs that haven't been invented yet. How do we define tomorrow's employment market? What sort of jobs will there be around tomorrow? There'll be people doing all the things that machines can't do. Right? Let's get back to the surgeon. You have this picture in your mind of your child as a surgeon. But you forget that that's what a surgeon looks like these days. It's a different world. It's not career training. There's, technology is so wonderful. In between education and career training, in my slide, there was a little equal sign with a line through it. So, okay. You want so much for your kids, don't you? Here's a little exercise. Audience participation. You'd like them to be happy, you'd like them to have enough money, you'd like them to be a nice organisation, you'd like them to be good people, be nice if they had a good marriage, all that stuff, right? You want all of that for your kid. Okay, I'm going to be me. You can only have two. In your minds, if that's mum, tell her I'll be late. In your minds, pick two, only two. Have you done that? You picked two? Let me show you what you picked. Yeah? That's what you want. You want your kids to be happy. You want them to be happy while they're at school. And you want them to be happy after they leave school. And you want us to work with you to give them what they need in order to have a happy life after they leave school, right? And good people have a tendency to be happier than bad people. So let's make them good as well. That's what we do. That's what we do. 
If you are successful in enrolling your child here, I promise you that in the years left for me here, I will show you that slide about 50 million times. And if you're a parent, it's a really scary slide because there's a lot of stuff there that you and I have to take responsibility for. And yes, you may have, you may have spotted, it does say exam score, but that's just one little thing out of all of those. Most schools in this city have the attitude that uh, leave your kids at the gate in the morning, pick them up in the afternoon, and in the meantime, please butt out. Because we're the experts, we know what we're doing. Okay? That's how schools work most of the time. We're not like that. Because we, we actually think you're really important. And yes, we know a lot more about curriculum and pedagogy and things like that. So if you come here, please don't try and tell us how to do what we've been trained to do. But you know more about your kid than we ever will. So we have to get those two knowledge bases together. We have to form a partnership, and it's an active partnership. You've got dads and kids working together. This is why we think you're important. Do you realize that a child doing a full day of school, seven hours of school a day, 186 days a year, do you realize they spend 14.86% of the year at school? Only 15% of their year is spent at school. 33% they're fast asleep, I hope. I hope your kids get enough sleep because they learn better when they do. And the remaining 52% of the year is yours. That's why we think you're important. That's why we think we should work in partnership with you. Because you see more than three times as much of your kids awake than we do. We want you to believe in what we do. We believe, we believe learning should be joyful. We believe kids should be happy. We think childhood should be a happy experience. And we think learning, we think that classes of kids who sit up straight, face the front and pay attention aren't learning. We think kids who are happy, who are busy, who are engaged, who are doing things that they think are important. They, we want you to believe in education for life, not just for exams. We don't educate kids just for exams, because if that's all we do, and if we do it successfully, if we send out kids who have perfect IB scores and nothing else, then we're doing them a disservice. That's not our focus. I'm not saying we don't get it. We do get top exam results, but that's not what we aim at. Our aim is to create awesome people. And what we found over the years is that awesome people get top exam results. We don't want you to be spectator parents. We want you to participate in the journey. It's a really exciting journey. We want you to support us in what you do. I told you I'd say that slide a lot. We want this to be as important to you as it is to us, and as it is to your child. We want you to set an example in all things. That is the strongest teaching equipment, teaching tool we have is mum and dad's example. You know, every time, every time mum says to a child, you look tired, it's okay, I'll phone the school and tell them you've got a fever. Please don't do that, we're not that sort of school. We're in a partnership. Okay? Um, we want you to believe that kids should be happy. They should be. And we want you to help us keep them happy. We want you to 
allow them to be kids, to let them play. Because play is where they learn, play is so very, very happy. And we want you to accept the fact that each of you has a child who is absolutely perfect. Yeah? Each of you has a little one which is more spectacular, cuter, smarter, more intelligent, better than any of the other kids belonging to any of these other parents, right? That's okay. Kids deserve that. We want you to accept the fact that your child is perfect, let them develop, but please don't push to improve them. Your kid doesn't need improving. They're spectacular already. Okay? 15 minutes, spot on. Okay, that's it for me. Have a lovely day. Who's next? Tony. So you've had an American, and you had an Australian, and now you have a Kiwi. And it's great to see so many of you here this morning. Uh, Steve and Neil have spoken to you more globally about the school. This is now the time when me, Tony, as the head of primary at um, OGC campus, and Lisa, who is our here the primary here at the JDR campus. Our opportunity to hone down a little bit more about what it's like for nursery, JKG and SKG. How many of you are looking at, uh, or are here today because you're looking at a place for the nursery? Okay, oh, okay. For JKG. For senior kindergarten, for older than that, yeah. For how many of you is the child that you're thinking about for this, uh, for the school, the first child that you have? Okay, so second, third, <laughs> fourth. Okay, I'll stop there. <laughs> um, how many of you are already parents of OAs? Okay, so quite a few of you. Great. <coughs> so we're going to be talking a little bit more now in depth about nursery and junior and senior kindergarten. Later on, we're going to do that. So we'll skip over that. And you've heard this morning a lot about the uh, that we are one school, but we just happen to be on two different campuses. Lisa and I both as uh, heads of our primary divisions uh, talk a lot together. We meet regularly and we talk about learning and what's happening in our campuses and what's happening with the learning uh, for the students. At the moment, our campuses look like this. And you can see that from the top parts, it's, it's pretty similar. Eight grades at both, both campuses. Uh, because the uh, uh, Garden City campus has been going for, for a bit longer, uh, there are more students here at the moment. But we do have four classes at nursery, and we have five classes at JKG. And right now we have at um, the OGC campus six classes at JKG through to grade five. And on this campus here we have three and further up in the primary area two. But building uh, on that and that's where there is the, uh, I guess, a greater room for, for growth. So we are an International Baccalaureate School, which you've already heard, and we offer the Primary Years Program. And Lisa's going to talk a lot more about that uh, in a few minutes. So what are we all about? 
We're about the Prime Year's program of the International Baccalaureate, and that is our reason for being. We follow the framework of the Prime Year's program, and we then look at the curriculum that is going to best suit our children within that framework. We're all about learning and how to learn. And we're all about having fun. And you could see in all those photos before how much fun uh, the children were having. And we're all about learning together as teams, learning collaboratively, which is why our furniture is not what you might see perhaps or remember when you were at school, when maybe the desks were in rows and they were facing the front to a teacher who was standing up the front in front of a whiteboard or a blackboard telling you what you needed to learn. We know that that's not how learning works any longer. So having furniture which allows for collaboration, arranging groups, looking at flexible teaching and flexible spaces with flexible groupings of students is the way to go. Collaboration is, is one of the big things that we focus on. And it's really important for us that when the children arrive, with us in nursery, that we are focusing on them as being lifelong learners, which is exactly what we, as the faculty, are as well. It's important to us that we are also lifelong learners. So this is my opportunity now to be a bit of a mind reader. I'm sure you've come with a number of questions that you want answered. And I wonder if any of these are the questions that you might have. Length of the day. So you had to be here at for an 8.30 start. And your children, clearly it's training me to be closer isn't it, to, the, to the laptop. Yeah, so your children need to be in school before 7.45 in the morning. Yeah, there's a few gulps here. <laughs> that means you have to be up quite early, and so do they. Uh, classes for nursery and JKG finish at 12.15, and then you come on and pick them up and take them home for the afternoon. In January, we start looking at extending the day for our junior kindergarten students. Firstly, one day a week, then a second day, and then a third day. And we work on an eight-day cycle. The children find the eight-day cycle works really well. Parents find it really hard to, to get their head around it. We don't have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We have day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then eight. <coughs> It doesn't take you long to get used to it, though. Um, but listen to what the children say because they're, they're the best at it. In senior kindergarten, again, they start at the same time, but they finish like everyone else does at 2.50. There are after-school activities, a limited number, for them because they had such a, a long day, they're young still, so there are not as many offered uh, activities offered as extracurricular activities, but if they do participate in one, then it takes them through to about 10 past four. And again, they work on that eight day cycle. You've heard the answer to this, so you don't really need much explanation. Except that nursery and JKG don't have a cooked lunch because they've gone home. You feed them at home. They do bring a snack during the day and they have a snack time when they can have a break to have something to eat and drink. But uh, from SKG to grade 5, yes, there is. And you've um, seen the amazing photos, and that's why I'm like this. It didn't used to be like this until I came here. Yeah, if you believe that. Um, class sizes. 
uh, I don't know what the class sizes that you might be thinking of, maybe 25, 30, lower. For us, we try to keep our nursery ratio from the teacher, the classroom homeroom teacher, to the group of students that they have to around about 16. It might be a bit less and it might be a bit more. In JKG, we increase the number and then in senior kindergarten and right through the rest of the school, uh, we look at trying to keep our class to the homeroom teacher, the groupings of the homeroom teacher, around about uh, 20. You know the answer to this, yes we do, and they are outsourced. At the beginning of the year, I think it's a really good idea that you bring your students to school, particularly if they're three-year-olds and four-year-olds. If you have the choice, I guess, but it's really good for you to be able to bring them, settle them in, rather than just send them off uh, and uh, hoping that things are going to go okay. They will but much easier with mum and dad are there. Well, I wonder what the answer to this is. Who thinks no? Who thinks yes? Who thinks they really don't know, clearly? Um, so the answer to that is no. We don't test the students. It's really important for us, though, to know where they're at. And so we are doing lots of assessments all the way through. Um, every now and then it might be just with, a, with an individual and we're trying to work out now how's that going for, for this particular child? What's going to be the next step that we're ready to move them on to? But do we sit down and do a formal test? No, we don't. Yes, we do. And we use our local environment a lot to take our children out. Uh, and when they get to grades three, four, and five, we head out a little bit further out of town, round about um, two hours away from, from the campuses, and uh, we have overnight camps. Yes, we do, but not in a nursery and not in JKG, and not in senior kindergarten. But we do from grade one and up. From grade one and up, every child has daily Hindi classes, and from grades three, four, and five, we introduce them to French and Spanish, the language of tuition, and we use the host country language, and I know that there are lots and lots of host country languages here in India, but we've chosen Hindi as one we want to go with. We also have Marathi as an after-school activity um, and children can sign up for that as well. <coughs> Lisa. Morning parents. Gosh, you're good listeners. I hope your children are listen as well as you do. Do they? <laughs> um, so we've had an American man, we've had an Australian man, a Kiwi or a bird from, I don't know where are you from, New Zealand. Uh, I'm from Wales. Many, many, many years ago, I left 20 years ago, so I'm, I'm a woman, obviously. I also get the privilege of being a parent. Um, I have two children, and as well as being the head of primary here at the JBLR campus, I have a daughter in SKG, and I have a son in grade five. So I know what it's like to wear the parent hat. I'm just curious, um, parents, how many of you are thinking of putting your child in school for the very first time? This will be the very first time. It's a big decision, right? You're trusting an organization to look after your little one, your most precious one. It's a really big decision, and you've already made that first step today, so welcome to our school. I want to start a little bit by telling you about the program that we offer here. Now, let's be real about this. I cannot explain the primary years program 
in 15 minutes. So after this session today, I really encourage you to go off and do some research and find out what it means for your children at this age level. It's very different. And that's what I've learned from our parents. What we offer here is very different from what you're used to, but also from what uh, some of our students are used to, too. So I'm going to start by showing a very short video. Um, I want you to look at the keywords. This is from the IB, and it's all about early years and what we focus on with the little ones. Lots of acronyms today. Yes, OIS, JVLR, OGC, PYP, MYP, DP. We like acronyms. Um, make sure you find out what those acronyms start for, stand for. So, what we look at with our primary years program, the PYP, it's been going for over 20 years. It's a well established program. And let's be clear about this it's not British, it's not American. Um, it's taken in the best programs from around the world and it's been going for a very, very long time. There are thousands of schools that follow this program. But the aim of all the IB programs is to develop internationally minded children. And what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean that the children learn about just cultures and traditions and celebrations. It actually means they become lifelong learners. They're looking at being caring and knowledgeable. You'll learn about this as you find out more about um, the PYP. So, as was said earlier, OGC um, campus has been authorized to teach the PYP since 2011. And right now, at this campus, we are going through the candidacy phase. And I've been overseas for 18 years, and this is my sixth international school. And all the schools I've worked in have been PYP. This school is way beyond where we need to be. And I'm quite proud of all the teachers and the students and how they've come along this journey. Considering we're a new campus here, we really are doing well with the program. But I need the parents to know, I need you guys to know that we are in the candidacy phase of the primary program. So you'll see this model everywhere. This is um, an IB model of the primary years program. We talked a little bit about knowledge earlier. Knowledge is important, um, but so are these other essential elements. Conceptual understanding, skills, attitude, and action. 
They're called essential elements. It's not just knowing that two plus two is four. It's understanding the different ways that you can make four. And I went into a JKG class a couple of weeks ago, one of my favorite age groups to go in and see the children at work. And they were all drawing shapes, 2D shapes on whiteboards. And some of them were making it with Play-Doh and painting. And these children, very young children, they knew circles and triangles and squares and rectangles. They knew that already. So I went over to a group and said to them, hmm, what are you doing? The children looked at me, we're drawing shapes. And I looked at the teacher and said, I don't know what a shape is. What is a shape? The teacher gave me a very odd look. And one of the students said, Miss Lisa, you're the boss of the school. I think you know what shapes are. I said, no, I really don't know how to define what a shape is. So they started drawing circles and triangles and rectangles and squares. And that told me as a teacher that they had the knowledge, right? They knew the names. They knew how to draw them. But what we wanted to take it to the next level was, was that conceptual understanding. So I grabbed a whiteboard and I drew a very abstract shape. I'm not a very good artist. It looked a little bit like a car and a train. And they looked at it and I said, so is this a shape? And the children looked at the board. And one of the children grabbed the board off me and said, this is a shape. And he divided my shape into triangles and parallelograms and rhombuses and um, rectangles and squares. And that told me that that child had knowledge that he didn't know that he had, but he understood the concepts of shape. So it's really hard to explain to you today that conceptual understanding of ideas. Yes, we do the knowledge, of course we do the knowledge, but the concept is much bigger than the knowledge. And of course, the skills, attitudes, and action, it's all about collaboration. It's all about how do the children learn all this stuff. We do not stand there and sermon and preach at the children. We do not use textbooks or worksheets. We do not have homework. We really allow the children to explore with their peers and the teachers who are the facilitators about their um, knowledge of different topics. And I wanted, I wanted to, to show you some videos. videos. This, this was big learning for me. Um, I came here last year. And, and one of the things I like to do as a parent is find out where are our parents, parents coming from. from. These parents have been in the school a year. And they did a workshop. We do lots of workshops for parents. Um, we recently did an inquiry workshop. And these parents left some testimonials at the end of the session about what they understand about PYP. So I've got three short, very short videos that you can have a look at. Hi, um, thank you so much for organizing this workshop. It really gives um, um, a peek into um, what and how our children are learning. And it's, uh, it's really interesting to see uh, that there is uh, not just uh, knowledge which, uh, which, is, you know, which they are figuring out by doing their own research, uh, but there is a lot of reflection, a lot of collaboration which is going into it. And uh, uh, further, uh, I think that at, at this earlier age, uh, to be able to understand um, different viewpoints, uh, be able to uh, uh, listen to each other, uh, becoming uh, more uh, tolerant to each other's views, and uh, uh, and just uh, understand that people have different ideas, and that gives uh, them and uh, you know. Uh, it opens up the world for them and it also um, um, uh, makes them, I feel, over a period of time, a lot more compassionate, uh, kinder, uh, open minded people. And uh, also to understand that there is no right and wrong, there are different ways to look at things and um, to not always have all the answers, but to be able to do new points and uh, be able to. Uh, you know, uh, see that it's really important.
And um, I think that's what the workshop for me to do. And uh, thank you so much for telling me a lot of good things to all my understanding of the way um, like the Thank you, Christine, and uh, the OISD for holding this workshop with us. I think what I picked up today is uh, the IP learning style is very collaborative. There's a lot of research involved, and what I like the most about it is that uh, instead of giving a ready made set of things for students to learn, they're encouraged to uh, promote the thing and reflect on their own heads. Right. Um, I really liked uh, the exercise that we did at the beginning of saying, see, think, and wonder. I think we all tried to do it in one day. Uh, but it seems I was able to have a distinct wish in there. So the children are a lot more observant and apply a lot more thinking uh, in whatever they are doing. So thank you so much. I uh, look forward to coming back. quite interesting with the parents. Like I said, we do lots of parent workshops throughout the year and you will get, um, if you're successful at our school, that you will get the opportunity to find out more and more about the program. I'm just going to quickly slide because I'm aware of the time. We really do a play-based learning for our little ones and let's be clear, there's no difference between work and play. The children don't just come in and play on swings and slides and get messy in the sandpit. They're actually working at the same time. So you'll hear play-based learning. 
In our early years, we do four units of inquiry, or UOI, as they're called. Um, we have to do who we are, we have to do how we express ourselves, and we choose to do two more, depending on um, where the children are at. These four units in our early years, and six units for SKG, really explore big ideas. Families, relationships, friendships, creativity, how we express ourselves. And um, when you find some research online, what you'll discover is through, within these units, all these subjects are covered. And they're not covered separately, they're actually covered together. And we call that a transdisciplinary program. So inquiry-based, asking questions. How many of you at home, when your child asks you a question, because that's all they do at this age, right? You don't have to give them the answer. You have to wonder why they're thinking those questions and wonder why they're asking you those questions. It's all about curiosity. In each of those units, they work through an inquiry cycle. We find out what they know, what they want to know, and what their passions are. Teachers don't teach everybody the same way. It's very different depending on where the children are at. Like I said earlier, we're a concept-based program, so it's all about understanding, not just knowledge. And collaborative learning, I'm sure you've heard that word many, many times this morning, yes? Children are not learning by themselves. They're learning from each other and with each other. So the role of the teacher is really to facilitate that learning. And we like to use the word facilitator rather than teacher. The teachers do an incredible amount of hard work planning for these units. Incredible. But there's only so much you can plan because the children have to tell us what they know and what they want to find out. So the teacher provides the role as a motivator or a meddler in the middle. That's one of my favorite um, phrases. So a couple of last slides. This is what we do as a school. Okay, we really look at developing lifelong learners and promoting student agency. So it's all about empowering students and for students to take responsibility for their own learning. What do we want our families to be? And there was a long list, it was really hard to choose. And I'm going back to Neil's slide at the beginning, the red slide, the slide he likes to keep showing. There's a lot of things that you can do, but for us in primary, for early years, these three things are really, really important. Okay? I'm going to stop there. I'm very conscious of time. I am sure you have many, many questions. We are not going to take questions today, but we will be outside in the lobby. Um, the whole team will be, if you want to ask us specific questions, okay? I'm going to hand over to admissions. Okay. Good. Thank you for coming. And thank you for being good listeners. And I'm sorry you had to sit for such a long time. We don't do that to our children, right? We have lots and lots of movement with our children. Thank you very much for coming this morning. Lots of things for you to think about, I'm hoping. And like I said, we'll be in the lobby if you have any specific questions to ask us. And thank you, team. Thank you for coming, thank you. Uh, please feel free to email admissions if you have any further questions about the next steps, the process, the timeline, any sorts of questions. Please, please feel free to email us, okay? Thank you.